express my appreciation to your great minister, Brother Sam Bailey, for inviting me to come and to be with you on this Lord's Day to help you celebrate 60 years. God working with this church, allowing you to minister to this community and minister to the lost souls of men and to go up to him in praise together each Lord's Day and to study his word and be able to live out his word as you move about men and women on a daily basis. You're blessed here. It is obvious that God's hand of blessing, God's hand of providence, is upon this work. I have been in the Dallas area a long time, been in the brotherhood a long time, and I believe that I am able to know and to say with assurance when God truly has moved among a people. I know your history. And I know how God has brought you to this place. You're blessed to have as your minister Brother Sam Bailey. Gifted. Gifted man. Comes from great family. People who have worshipped God a long time. I were looking at him from sports perspective. Two ways. First, if he were entering into the draft for the National Basketball Association, he would probably be drafted first. But since he's been on the battlefield a little while, celebrating 10 years, it's a possibility he could become a free agent. And uh, if, 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 if he were to become a free agent, there would be some mighty important and prestigious places that would uh, solicit his services. And uh, I am, I, I am, I have watched him. And I am greatly impressed. He reminds me of my son, Shelton the Fourth. Brother Bailey, I didn't come to preach you, but I don't think that the Lord minds me saying what I'm saying. You're blessed because you have a great preacher. You're blessed because you have a great preacher. Brother Dave, I've watched him. I know his history. It comes from a great family. For him to be we have great history I could go on and on I remember so much so I'm awed <laughs> I am awed by what God has done I don't have to prove to you that I like preaching. Uh, 
I do. And I want to say this about my companion, my wife, for 47 years. Four children, nine grandchildren. I've been all for her, by her. Faithfulness to the ministry, my ministry. She goes with me and supports me. She is my number one. So I don't, I don't take it for granted that I have a wife as lovely and supportive as Sister Gibbs. I am awed by the church that I have been privileged to preach for for 38 years. This church supported me when I was just 30 years of age. They allowed me to raise my children in the midst of a beautiful congregation. And my children have a good perspective of the Lord's church because of the wonderful ministry that I've been able to have. 38 years, and I'm going to transition I didn't say retire, I'm going to transition. But my transition is not because I'm being forced out. I want to see that church continue to grow. And I know that the only way it's going to grow is you're going to have to get another Sam Bailey and some other Sam Bailey to step in and to move that church and continue the growth of that church. I know what God has done for me. So I really just want to congratulate you. And I want you to understand that it is a pleasure for me, an honor for me to be here to help you celebrate 60 years. I'm going to preach from Nehemiah. Greenville Avenue, you are here. Several members are here. Thank you. You tell, you tell Greenville what I said about them here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Read in your hearing was Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17 through 20. Let me say this to you. The story of Nehemiah and the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem is a great story. It is a great story of inspiration. It is a treatise or a handbook on great leadership. Every movement needs great leadership. As leadership goes, so goes an organization. This book not only tells us concerning great leadership, but it's a book that also outlines revival, what revival looks like, major components. One has to be obedient to God bringing honor to God. This is what brings revival, brings renewal to a congregation. In this story, there is a noble cause. And the reason it's a noble cause is because in this great treatise, Nehemiah identifies an effort, a need to the 
return to Jerusalem to rebuild its walls. And I like what the Bible says when it says in verse number 18, I told them of the hand of my God which had been good upon me and also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. May I say to us and to you that this is a noble work. This is a good work. Jerusalem, with its gates being burned and its walls being torn down, was a depressing, a distressing, and a situation that calls great shame on the cause of our God. God's name was in this city. God's people are in this city. God's temple is in this city. For the walls to be torn down and the gates to be burned did not bring honor to God, did not lift his name to the heights that all men would be able to praise and honor his great name. So when news came to Nehemiah, Nehemiah, recognizing that the cause of God is a noble cause, got letters from the king to go to Jerusalem, there to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. I am saying to you that that was a noble cause. As I look at what we're doing in celebrating 60 years of existence here. This also is a noble cause. Somebody ought to ask me, Brother Gibbs, what makes it a noble cause? It's a noble cause because God is the one who commissions it. God is the one who gets the glory. God is the one who is the most important part of a noble cause. If you ask me, there was a man by the name of Noah who entered into a noble cause. That noble cause was a cause that had tremendous girth to it and a great amount of effort that had to be put into it. That was the building of an ark. That building of the ark was a noble cause. I know it was a noble cause when God called Abraham to build a nation of people. God called him out of the land of air. Called him to a place. He would show him from his seed he was going to build a nation. That was a noble cause. God called Abraham. It was a noble cause. God commissioned Moses to go and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. It's a noble cause. Jesus came and he built the church and for you and I to be a part of what we are part of today. It's a cause that comes from God. God is the originator. God is the one who has placed this church here. Every member that is a part of it, you're a part of a noble cause because God is the one who has called you to this place. And any cause that's noble, going to take three things. Number one, you're going to have to commit yourself to it. You can't build an ark without commitment to God. You will not build a nation without commitment to God. You cannot go into Egypt, bring God's people out of Egypt without commitment. 
if it's a noble cause, people who are part of it have to commit themselves to it. Another thing is that you got to prioritize when it's a noble cause. In other words, you got to make it number one and first place in the lives of the people. You can't do it part-time. God didn't allow Noah to build the ark on part-time. God didn't allow Abraham to build a nation part-time. God didn't allow Moses to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt on a part-time basis. If you're going to continue to build this church, you're going to have to commit yourself to it. You're going to have to prioritize the work of the church. I know I'm right because the Bible is right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. God will always bless his cause. God will always bless the people who have committed to it. God will always bless the people who have prioritized his work. And then you're going to have to also understand that you're going to have to sacrifice. I've never known a cause of God to go without sacrifice. Noah had to sacrifice. Am I right about it? Abraham had to sacrifice. Moses had to sacrifice. And I decided to marry Sister Gibbs. That was a noble cause. Why? Because marriage is from God Almighty. God is the one who commissioned marriage. And in order for our marriage to make it and our marriage to be successful, I had to commit to it. I had to prioritize it. And Lord knows I'm sacrificing for it. Am I right about it? Every dollar that I make goes to Sister Gibbs. Am I right about it? Why? Because that is a noble cause. Amen. That's a good looking woman. And therefore, I made a sacrifice to get to her. I committed to her, and Lord knows I have prioritized her. The Lord's church is more important. You're going to have to put commitment in the church, priority in the church, and you're going to have to sacrifice for the church, make the church more important than anything else on the face of this earth. As I move, I want to also say that this is not only a treatise of a noble cause, but it is also one that shows how beautiful it is for brethren to work together. You didn't get here without working together. I like in verse number 17, when Nehemiah came to the people, he said, let us build up the wall. In verse 17, put that on the screen. Watch that now. He said, you see the distress that we're in, how the Jerusalem lies waste, and his gates are burned with fire. Now watch what he says. Can you read that with me? He said, come let what? Come let us, come on now, let what? Us build the wall of Jerusalem. That what? We may not, may no longer be what? A reproach. Now watch this now. Verse number 17, that's Nehemiah talking. He said, let us build the wall. But I like verse number 18. And I told them, of the hand of, of my God, which was good upon me, and also of the king's words. Watch the next part of that. Watch what the Bible said, that he had spoken to me. So watch that. So what? They said, wait a minute. I like in verse number 17. It was what Nehemiah said. Is that all right? But when you get to verse number 18, it's what they said. There's a whole lot of difference between what Nehemiah said and what they said, now watch this now, what Nehemiah said was the same as what they said until the leadership and the people come together and it becomes a they and we situation. You cannot move the great noble work of Almighty God. Leadership has a part, but there's a part that the membership has to be involved in. No man will be able to build by himself. Even Jesus, when he came to, to sacrifice his life and to build the church, he knew that he needed some men to work with him. So he went out and he called 12 men to work with him. Am I right about it? Even on the day of Pentecost, 
when Peter stood up to preach, the Bible said he stood and the eleven stood with him. Anytime you moving the cause of God, you're going to have to have cooperation and you're going to have to have a membership and a leadership where all are working together for this great cause that God wants us to be a part of. You can't build a church without the people rising up to do the part that they have. You would not have had that successful day on yesterday. Brother Day couldn't do it by himself. He had to have some people that worked along with him. Every church, ladies and gentlemen, has to have elders and deacons and ministers and members that work together. So I am encouraging you. I am saying to you, you've come this far in 60 years. Number one, because this is a noble cause of God Almighty. God is the one who instituted it. God is the one who gets the glory. It's in God's honor. Am I right about it? But it comes because men and women are working together. You got to understand that when you do it together, then God is behind it. Unity is of God. You got to stay together. Be like that woman one time that drowned, was drowning and a man was trying to save her. And he reached for her and he grabbed her and grabbed her by her head and her wig came off. Then he reached again and uh, in, the, in her mouth and her teeth came out. He reached again and uh, then her arm came off. And he finally said, baby, if you want me to save you, you're going to have to stick together. Am I right about it? All I'm trying to say is that you and I in the Lord's church, we're going to have to learn to what? Stick together and do this thing what? Together. God wants the elders to work together, ministers to work together, deacons to work together, members to work together. I'm telling you, I know how God works with people when they stay together, when they work together. But as I move, let me say to you, every noble cause of God, every great work of God, even though it, it has to have men and women working together, but there's always some negativity and negative forces that have come in. Look with me at verse number 19 right quick. Verse number 19. Look what the Bible says in verse number 19. Now, do you have it? The Bible says, let us rise up and build. But then, but when San Balet, the horn knight, Lord have mercy, when San Balet, the horn knight, Tobiah, the Ammonite official, Gershom, the Arab, heard of it. Heard of it. Now, they ain't working, but they heard of it. Uh-huh. They heard of it. They laughed at us, despised us, and said, what is this thing? You mean to tell me you're going to call God's work a thing? Watch this, this thing that you're doing. Will you rebel against the king? Now, ladies and gentlemen, may I say to you, as you move into your 61st year, knowing from whence you have come, you didn't get here without negative forces. And you're not going to move forward without negative forces. There's always a Sam Balaam. There's always a Tobiah. There's always a Gershom. They are not just outside. Sometimes they're on the inside. There are negative folk in the church. Negative folk sometimes even in leadership. Negative folk. Now I'm just going to tell it like it is. Negative folk that are in the pews. They always have something negative to say about what's going on. I don't think this is right. I don't believe that they're going to be successful with that. But here's what I want to say to you. Negativity on the outside. Negative, ne negativity on the inside. Your Sam Bayless and Tobias and Gershom know that that's part of God's work. That's part of God's will. I'm going to say that again. Negativity is part of God's will. God wants negative forces in the work that he wants glory and honor for. Let me say it again. You cannot have a successful, growing, strong church unless 
there is some negativity in the body that causes, that causes those elements that are committed to doing the will of God to be strengthened by the negativity. Every negative force, hear me well, every negative force is a force to make the men of God stronger than they ever would have been without the negativity. No, 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 no. I know what I'm talking about. If you don't have negativity, you cannot grow strong. You cannot grow greater. Negativity has, has, has to be a part of the word. Amen, amen. Listen, every time a negative brother sticks up his head, I'm happy because God's going to give me strength, power. Am I right about it? Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I, am I too loud? Am I too loud? Right. You say I am? Okay. All right. All right. But no, 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 in the marriage. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm out the pulpit now. All right. No. You don't, you don't, your marriage, your marriage can't mature unless it's challenged. And it ain't going to be a challenge unless it's negative. May, may I, may I, may I know. You, you all right? All right. Huh? You with me? See, here's what I know. You don't know ugly. I mean, you don't know pretty until you know what? No, no, no. How, how do you know it's pretty? The only way you know it's pretty, you got to contrast pretty with what? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, this is pretty. You can't have pretty until you get some ugly. Every, every, listen. Oh, here's the only thing I'm trying to say. I don't want to work this point too, 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 too long. But see, the only way that you can get power from a battery, you got to connect to the what? Positive and to the what? See, when you get on the other side, of the negativity, you're much stronger. See, God didn't let Adam and Eve exist long without some negativity entering in. Because, see, the negativity becomes the test. Why do you think he allows the devil to get in here? Let the devil, go on and let the devil test this church. Don't worry about that. As long as you got your hand, strengthen your hands. The Bible said, they said, let us rise up and build. And they strengthened their hands. Strengthened. In other words, you're going to have to do some exercises. Huh? No, 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 no. When, 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 when that negativity comes in, strengthen. Ball your fist up. <laughs> I need, I need to quit. Huh? I 
need to quit. Oh, oh, church, 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 church. Just stay, Brother Bailey, stay with God. All right. As I close, as I close, as I close. Huh? <laughs> I didn't know it, but yeah, man, he said, I preach that. <laughs> man, a, 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 a negative ain't nothing but a positive in disguise. Tell me I can't do something, brother, I'll do it. Just to show you I can do it. <laughs> man, 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 so I know I need to quit. But, 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 but I remember when I want to marry my wife. Is it all right if I tell it, baby? Okay. Right. Man, you know, I was young, didn't have a job. And they say, they say, they say, I hadn't finished, really finished school. And then they told me, say, 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 you, you, you ain't going to make it if you get married now. I did. I married. And look where I am now. Somebody know God is the one who brought me in. Your negativity made me work harder. No, I'm going to finish school. Because you said I wasn't going to finish school. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, verse number 20. Verse number 20. It's up there, I know. Verse number 20. Now watch this. So I answered them and said to them, what? The God of what? Heaven what? The prosperity doesn't come from you. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No. You, you, you think you don't want to prosper. No. The prosperity comes from God. And so, God is a faithful God. I, I preach, I preach. I got some good stuff right here too, but but I feel like I've already preached longer than I should have. I really, I really do, I really, do, I really. Do. But but let me show you something how God will prosper us. Let me see if I can call a witness. God is the one who prospered Noah. And Noah did what God asked him to do. God is the one who allowed Noah to go into the ark. God is the one who shut the door. God is the one who brought the rain. God is the one who kept the rain outside of the ark. God is the one that kept him in there over, over a year and three months. God is the one that allowed the water to drown all of the enemy. God is the one who abated the water. God is the one that opened the door. God put him out there on dry ground. God started him all over. God called another witness. Moses. God is the one that prospered him. God put the power in the rod. God is the one that opened the sea. God brought the rain. God brought the water from a rock. God brought the, brought the manna from heaven. God called their body not to get, get sick. God kept them whole. God kept the clothes on their back. God brought them to the land of Canaan. Get me another witness. Abraham, God help me. Show me that you're prospered. Sarah's womb was, was closed. Sarah couldn't have a child. God waited till she was 90. God waited till Abraham was 100. God is the one that allowed them to prosper. God will prosper this church. God will help this church. If God be for you, who can be against you? God is the one. Amen, woes and life. God will do it. God will do it. Am I right about it? I done got happy now. Amen, amen, amen. God is all right. You let God do the leading. He'll lead you by a cloud in the day. Lead you with a cloud with a pillar of fire by night. God will do it. Am I right about it? God help you. God help you. God help you. Brother, Brother Bailey, did I do all right? Did I do all right? All right. All right, team. 
This is a mighty man. Mighty man. Mighty man. Did I do all right? All right. I did all right? All right, Chief. All right. So, all I'm saying, there's somebody else here from Greenville Avenue. All right, good, 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 good. Y'all got a lot of Greenville Avenue members. Now, y'all tell them, y'all tell them what I said about Greenville Avenue. All right. All right, make sure y'all tell them that. Oh, I am simply saying to you, and I want to leave you with this, that God is the one who said that he would prosper you. If you strengthen your hands, keep doing what God has asked you to do. Do not feel like you have to keep up with the Joneses. Keep up with Jesus. Do not let, do not let culture Dictate your future. You affect culture. God called you to affect culture. Not culture affect you. God wants you to lead out. God wants you to be the head, not to tell. The church of Christ is a noble calling. Stay the church of Christ. Keep calling the church of Christ. Amen, walls in life. Call things by Bible name. Do things Bible way. Do it like God said, and God will prosper you. Because God is in the prospering business. So I pray that you'll do that. If you're here and you're not a member of the Church of Christ, will you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Will you believe with all of your heart that God sent him to be a substitute for you, to die death for you, and to be able to be resurrected and through his blood? cleanse you from all of your sin? Will you believe that he is the son of God? Will you believe that he is God in the flesh? Will you accept that? Will you believe that? Will you believe not only that he came and substituted for you, but also will you be willing to repent? Will you be willing to turn away from your way to his way? I heard him say, except you repent, you're going to perish. Will you confess his name? Will you tell the world that I believe that he's the son of God? Will you confess that I am a child of God and I will be a child of God? He said, if you confess me before me and I will confess you before my father which is in heaven. And then go down with him in the water of grave of baptism. Baptism is for the remission of sins. When you come up out of the water, the water is not what washes away your sin. No, 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 no. It's God who forgives you of your sin. But God said, I will not do it until you go in the water and you come up out of the water. And I'm asking you, will you please accept this noble cause of the church, accept the noble cause of God, be a part of the church, stay faithful. And one day you hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. You strayed away from God, you put other things, prioritize other things other than the kingdom of God. Will you reprioritize now? Will you let a revival happen in you? Will you come back to God? Will you do that right now while together we stand and sing? Will you come? I'm a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. Yes, I'm just a hard fighting soldier and on this old bed. And Lord, I'm just a hard fighting soldier and I'm on this old Battlefield, I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service. And Lord, I've got a helmet on my head and in my hand. And Lord, I've got a helmet on my head and in my hand. A sword. And Lord, I've got a helmet on my head and in my hand a sword and ship. I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the surf. Oh, and I've got to walk around, talk around, and sing.
sing right hooray right wallow and lord i got to walk right talk right and sing right and pray right while on this old bed and lord i've got to walk right talk right and sing right pray right while on this old I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that Oh, precious Lord, please take my hand and lead me on. Oh, and I am tired and I am weak. And I am a warm heart through the storm and through the night. Just lead me on to the light. I'll keep on bringing Jesus by the service that I give and I have taken the master's hand and I will serve him to the end and I have taken the master's hand and I will serve him to Lord, I have taken the master's hand, and I will serve to the end. I'll keep on bring souls to Jesus by the service that Oh, that's why I'm a hard fight, fighting soldier, and I'm on. Lord, and I'm just a hard fighting soldier, and I'm on this old bed. Lord, I'm just a hard fight. Ding soldier and I'm on I'll keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I give.